So fragments here and some bone. There's some a nice concentric lamellar bone that mature bone is, is made of. And there's a bunch of marrow in between it. And if you're going to want teaching about marrow, you're going to have to have someone else do it, because I do not know much about heme path and marrow anymore. So bone is challenging for a lot of reasons, one of which is that oftentimes the types of specimens you're getting from bone are these fragmented curatage specimens, right? So it, it can become very difficult to, to get a nice view of the architecture because you're just seeing bits and pieces of the lesion. Radiology is hugely important in bone pathology, and really you should just you should always do what you can to get the radiology or the even if you don't have the actual radiographs to visualize to see what the orthopedic surgeon thought based on the radiology to get a copy of the radiology report because it's really easy to make big mistakes when you don't have the clinical info, the age of the patient, whether they're skeletally mature or immature, where what bone is involved, and what the lesion looks like on imaging studies all can be very, very important in helping uh, make sure, I mean, obviously what we see on the pathology is very important, but we have to make sure it matches with the radiographic. If it doesn't, then we have to figure out why or get some extra help to make sure. So it's kind of like a, a way, it's a way to avoid making mistakes is even if the path looks good, if the radiology and clinical doesn't fit, then we have to really step back and ask, am I totally sure that's right? Um, obviously there are times where the pathology is more important than everything else, but I always still want to know um, and it gives me pause, just like in the rest of pathology. If it doesn't make sense, you stop and ask, am I sure that this is the right diagnosis? So this is a lytic uh, lucent lesion in the medullary cavity um, in the, uh, the uh, metaphysis of the proximal femur of a 10-year-old boy. That's, uh, I'm making that history up, but that would be a, a characteristic um, a radiographic and clinical presentation. And then an MRI would show that this lucent lytic lesion is actually a cyst and that it's filled with uh, water density uh, fluid. And then microscopically what we see is this is the cyst lining right here. And sometimes it can be hard to tell if what you're looking at is the wall of a cyst or if you're looking at fragments of a solid tumor when you're looking at bone pathology specimens because they're often fragmented curatage specimens. So that's where, again, looking at the radiographic findings and also look at the orthopedic surgeon's uh, clinic note and op note. They will often have additional information in there. I mean, they're going to know if it was a cystic um, fluid-filled lesion or blood-filled lesion at the time of biopsy or if it was solid. So those things are really important to, um, to help uh, with a case like this. So the lining is not much. I mean, there's not much going on here. It's kind of this loose uh, fibrous connective tissue kind of forming a band. You can see that there's, you can kind of see that the, that's really like the edge right here, right? That's the edge of the cyst, but it doesn't really have any lining. It's just kind of compressed like either a thin layer of fibroblasts or histiocytes. Sometimes you can get giant cells along there. Um, it almost, to me, looks like it's kind of doing that uh, synovial metaplasia thing that you'll sometimes see like around, say, a breast implant capsule. It vaguely reminds me of that, but it, there's not any real true lining. Just a thin uh, rim of fibrous tissue, and in that lining, you often have this dense, homogenized pink stuff, and it can run a range from looking like fibrin, like over here, and then here it's beginning to kind of compress and almost looks like it's turning into osteoid or bone. And um, I'm not actually sure which. I've, I've heard it described as fibrin-like material, but it, it seems to me to really have a range between fibrin and osteoid. And it like looks very smudgy and homogenized and eosinophilic. And then it begins to transition into stuff that looks more like actual bone. So this, uh, this is characteristic of a solitary bone cyst, also known as a simple bone cyst or a unicameral bone cyst, although those latter two names are a bit of a misnomer because these are sometimes multi-loculated rather than simple, you know, single uh, cystic space. But the, they don't, they're not super exciting to look at because they just have this thin wall. I find the homogenized pink material uh, to be one of the most helpful uh, findings microscopically. And then, of course, taken in conjunction with the clinical and the radiographic. Let's see if there's anything else going on here. Here's some more over here. See, here's another little, this is the little thin fibrous membrane that makes the wall of the cyst that we're seeing here. 
and there can be some blood, even though these are these are kind of uh, fluid filled. They may ble have uh, bleeding into them, and as a result, you'll often find little hemosiderin deposits there. Now, if you start seeing a lot of that, you could think, what about aneurysmal bone cyst? Usually, there's going to be uh, radiographic features that help distinguish ABC from UBC or solitary bone cyst, but sometimes they can have overlapping findings. Uh, so I feel like the radiology is the most important thing, but then also in uh, aneurysmal bone cyst, and I have a video about that. I'll put a link uh, down below if you're watching this online. There tends to be a lot more um, kind of granulation tissue-like or fasciitis-like stuff. Now here, there's some right here that looks kind of like loose granulation tissue or almost like nodular fasciitis, but I feel like in general, it's much more abundant in aneurysmal bone cyst, and there's also more abundant giant cells. There are usually kind of giant cell rich regions in the lining and walls of the cystic spaces in ABC, and there's lots of new bone formation and like kind of robust reactive osteoid production by reactive osteoblasts. And so those things, uh, I feel like basically that ABC looks a lot busier and more active um, and UBC looks a little bit more like bland and boring. That might be oversimplification, but that's kind of the way it strikes me as. Now, I will point out that like many benign bone lesions, cystic or otherwise, they sometimes present when the patient develops a fracture at the site of the lesion. The lesion weakens the bone, and then the kid's out playing or whatever, and he's you know playing football and and feels a pop, and then you know goes in and there's a fracture with this lytic lesion underlying it. I see uh, benign bone uh, things and also malignant ones too. I see bone lesions often present that way, where that they first show up when they develop a pathological fracture at the site of the lesion. So when that's happened, depending on how long it's been, you can begin to see new bone formation and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of the changes like you'd see in a fracture callus in the setting of UVC. So again, that's where the radiographic stuff is important uh, to sort it out. But here's a look again at that, that homogenized fibrinoid stuff. And sometimes this can make kind of concentric, lamellated um, spherical structures that can become calcified. And some people have likened it um, to the cementum-like material that can be seen in the uh, in bone lesions of the jaw, um, some of those bone lesions, which I find that to be a whole complicated world. That's uh, Bone pathology is hard enough, but the oral pathology bone lesions, I feel like are like a world apart in their own special kind of uh, uh, categories to me. They're very challenging and complex, I believe. So in any case, um, that this kind of stuff sometimes can begin to mimic uh, cementum is what some people have said. So thin fibrous lining, that homogenized pink material, sometimes you're going to get some hemosiderin and, and sometimes you'll get some giant cells, although this one doesn't really have much in the way of giant cells. And put that all together with the radiographic information and you have a solitary bone cyst, aka simple bone cyst or unicameral bone cyst, which is benign.